this might not be something that you really want to hear. We don't agree with all things out here about peel and stick. In this video, we are going to discuss all the ugly truth about peel and stick so you will know what you need to know about it and we're definitely gonna answer the question, is peel and stick really renter friendly? So keep watching. We're Darius and Akula of DIY Power Couple. Welcome to our channel. First off, let's just talk about how we feel about peel and stick. Yeah. Peel and stick is not a cheap vinyl product. It's actually the floor tiles are really good and that kind of puts us into First ugly truth about peel and stick is that all peel and stick is not the same. We kind of break it down into two areas. Peel and stick for flooring. So peel and stick for the floor is more rigid, it's heavier, and it mimics the look of luxury uh, tiles. And that's what's nice about it. Usually you find these in boxes and these can really, really update your home. And they'd be anywhere where you put regular vinyl flooring. So kitchens, yeah. bathrooms. Okay. Something I want to add about those floor tiles, their adhesive is very strong. Even trying to peel the back off of these tiles is hard because the adhesive is made to stick and to not be moved. To stay on that floor. To stay on the floor. The second type of peel and stick is a lighter form and usually you'll see these for walls and backsplashes. Um, the thing about these, even wallpaper, so they'll be much thinner and sometimes the adhesive is not as strong. The thinner peel and stick is, the less it will stick. I mean, because the adhesive is made to come off. So they're able to be put on and taken off a little bit easier, readjusted. And the problems with those sometimes are that they can peel, you'll see some peeling or, or lipping. lipping. Lipping is when it takes the edge of the uh, tile and it just folds up, that's yes. called lipping. If you have a thick peel and stick tile, the adhesive is usually stronger. So there is a difference in peel and stick tiles based on the thickness of the tile. We love peel and stick. Yeah, we love peel and stick. One of the best things about peel and stick that we believe is that it can give you options and aesthetic that you may not um, have thought about before. That's what I was gonna say is that it just gives you a certain look. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small like little laundry room, a closet pantry, um, a foyer area, you wanna create a foyer. Peel and stick has so many options and peel and stick is just a great way to do something like that. For us, it is the most affordable, transformative DIY product out in the market today hands down. And then if you want to take it to another level, you can grout the floor. You can grout these peel and stick tiles. So now, now we're getting next level. Now you're creating a waterproof barrier. You are giving a whole new look and vibe, just like if you had ceramic or porcelain tiles installed and you can really do some creative things. With your peel and stick. On our channel, you can check out an entire peel and stick playlist. And we've used peel and stick tiles in all sorts of things. We have used even several different brands of peel and stick. The next ugly truth that we also learned and we have experience in is that peel and stick flooring is not supposed to go on the wall. Well, it may not go on your wall. And if it's it does go, to. it's not supposed to go on your wall. And if it does, it voids the warranty. And you're also going to have to use more products to get it to stick. We have had to come to grips with this truth. Yeah, we've used peel and stick on the walls in our bathroom mm -hmm. and also in our laundry room. Mm -hmm. And when you do it that way, you have to realize that there's a different process for putting those on your wall. One thing is you're gonna have to use a special adhesive because just gravity alone is gonna be pulling at the tiles and they won't want to stick. They need extra help sticking to a vertical subfloor. So when you start doing it that way and add extra adhesive, it's definitely gonna be permanent on your wall. And removing it is going to be messy. Definitely going to be a DIY project in itself. You're gonna need a heat gun or some type of heat source and pull it up and scrape the adhesive off of the surface because it is not wanting to be removable. Peel and stick, 
It's to peel. It's to peel and stick. <laughs> Not to unstick. Not to peel and unstick. <laughs> it's to peel and stay on. The way that it's designed, the adhesive is for a horizontal installation. Flat, horizontal, Flat, stuck to the floor. Horizontal insulation, and then you want to roll it with a big roller. 100 pound roller. Or yourself. Or your feet. To make sure those tiles are stuck down and they are bonding with your subfloor and everything is fine. <laughs> but you do want to have some type of mechanism that's going to like stick the tiles on the floor. And, and just so you know, we've done peel and stick in a kitchen, in a bathroom, in a laundry room. Two bathrooms. Bathroom. We've yeah. done peel and stick on the stairs. On the wall. Oh, I forgot we about We have stairs. done peel and stick on yeah. a ledge. We kind of know the, the, the way that this product handles itself. And it's very good if you do it correctly. So the final ugly truth that we agree on is that peel and stick is not a renter friendly product in its true form. In all of the videos and in every installation, um, we've had that question come up in the comments. Is peel and stick renter friendly? And unequivocally, we have said no. No. And let us tell you why. I know you've seen this on YouTube. You've seen people use peel and stick, and they'll put it on some sort of barrier to um, make it where when you're ready to pull it up, you can just kind of pull the barrier up. Yeah. You want to help them out. It's like a full, you want to place a faux surface. Yeah, like so plywood or plywood, poster board. Poster board. I've seen uh, saran wrap. Some people have on used on the floor. On the floor, but and then again, they put the peel and stick on top of this. But there's some there's some issues with that. One of the issues that we've noticed that if peel and stick is not stuck to the ground, it will slide on the floor. It's going to be harder for one the peel and, the tile to stick to it because it's, that's not what it's made to do. And if you get that up and there's any seeping or or even just one tile yeah. that's stuck to the ground, you know, if it's stuck to the floor, then that can cause you to lose your deposit. Trying to get that up because mm -hmm. it's not going to be easy. The reason why some people feel that peel and stick is render friendly is because some products will actually say removable. It is designed to be removed, but the material itself usually is thinner. It's like lightweight and you'll find that it may even fall down over time. So the thinner peel and stick products that go on your wall, sometimes when you pull them off, yeah. they can also pull off your paint. You just want to make sure that you're careful when you're pulling those products off your wall. So that this is the only reason why we say it's not renter friendly. That peel and stick is not renter friendly. Because once you start doing all these extra steps, yeah. it's not DIY friendly anymore. It's no longer an easy DIY process. So guys, we just want you to know that if you want to make peel and stick renter friendly, you're going to use more product and you're gonna use more money to make the project happen. And that's not really what Peel and Stick is designed for. It's a product to make easy, budget-friendly, um, transformative updates in your home that you will enjoy for a while. We thank you so much for watching and be sure to share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you, you can, can DIY, DIY too. too. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And we hope that you have a better understanding about peeling stick tiles. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.